Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in Las Vegas at HPE Discover 2016. Uh, first show as HPE Dis Discover in Las Vegas, so we're excited to be here. And we wanted to, we thought it was hot, so we thought we'd go to Switzerland. We have the Switzerland of the tech world, QLogic. I'm really excited to have Greg Sharon, uh, the CTO of QLogic. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So you've been on theCUBE a ton, you've seen a lot of change in the industry, and, and again, we call you Switzerland because you guys are really the, the stuff that connects everything together. If the cloud doesn't work if you guys aren't in there helping power. So what are your impressions of the show this year compared to some of the other uh, HP Discovers you've been to? Actually, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I think that the amount of traffic, the, the amount of new things that are being talked about you know, there, there's enough forward-looking things in terms of, of HP's focus on sort of the machine, you know, in terms of, of future capabilities, but also I think we're starting to see more and more uh, the reality of the composability, the composable solution um, in Synergy. You know, that was sort of announced last year at, at Discover in, in, uh, in London, but uh, this year uh, we're, we're right across from the, the Synergy, you know, arena, and I, I really love it because I, I think it's it's bringing it much clearer, much uh, much simplified story in terms of what synergy is. I think there's some level of confusion of well, gosh, what's the difference between it and a blade server? <laughs> right. In the past, and, and this year they, they actually have a rack of servers, you know, right next to the synergy uh, composable servers, showing you know with the addition of one view, the integration of both sides into the into the same environment. So. I think it's a very, very healthy story and a lot more explanation behind it. Because it's, it's a pretty important point, because there's, there's a lot of legacy stuff out there, there's a lot of infrastructure that's already out there running big apps and, and, and legacy apps. At the same time, it's a lot of greenfield opportunity, people are putting in new apps, and we just heard about the, the uh, partnership with Docker. Um, but those things have to work together, right? They can't work in an independent silo. That's very true. I mean, I, I have the, the luxury that being a CTO, I get to live most of my life in the future, and then uh, I, I get the wake-up call when I talk with folks about things like 100 gig Ethernet and 64 gigabit fiber channel and all these neat, nifty things that are really you know, a ways off in the future for most people. There's a little bit of, of 100 gig Ethernet that's installed now, but it, it's, not, you know, it's not broadly deployed in the data center. So I get the wake up call to say, okay, you're, you're right. We, we do have this very broad environment where we have the old and the new mixing together because people can't abolish their, their you know, investments that they have today in technology. And I think that's one of the great things about Synergy is that it really does leverage the existing environment of, of rack-based servers that are very popular and uh, will remain popular you know, even after the full deployment of, of the Synergy composable platform. Uh, but it gives us a, a great fit between them. We, we have a footprint in, in uh, you know, moving forward in both fiber channel and ethernet across Blade and, and uh, Composable as well as Rack. Today we were actually excited, we, we announced uh, along with HP our, our 25 gig ethernet solution. So that's, uh, 25 gig ethernet is, a, is sort of, we see it as sort of the new 10 gig, but to your point, it's probably not going to take the world by storm overnight, but we see it as a wonderful upgrade path of, of deploying something that's 25 gig ready. Even even though, you know, we it was at, at our booth today, and it was it was really funny because a customer came up and he he saw our tagline and he saw you know 25 gig and 25 is the new 10 and he said, ah crap, I just I just upgraded to 10 gig. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no no, that that's good, that's good. You, 10 gig, the infrastructure that you have today will work perfectly with, with 25, and you can install that this, this product in the host adapters today and just upgrade whenever you're ready. And so it's a 25 gig ready story as well as, because the whole world doesn't change overnight, even right. though you know, some of us, you know, technology-wise, get to see the future in advance, and, and we think, oh yeah, yeah, everybody's got 25 gig, everybody's got 50 and 100 gig, and it's, well, maybe not everybody. Maybe not everybody. <laughs> so, so the other thing that's changed a lot over the last couple of years is, is obviously the cloud, um, and, and 
I don't know. We were, we were talking a little bit off camera. It's, it's, you, you, as with all things, right, you get you get pendulum swings, and there was a tremendous pendulum swing aggressively towards public cloud, and it seems to be, as, as we've had in a number of CUBE interviews today, that it's kind of swinging back a little bit, where people are, are maybe a little bit smarter about what can, can't move to the cloud, uh, you know, what is the right place for what workload. Uh, what are you seeing around kind of this theme? You know, we, we see very much, you know, greenfield opportunities, we see a lot of, of uh, uh, certainly a lot of startups, they don't buy their own infrastructure anymore, they start out in the cloud, but in terms of enterprise-based customers, we saw this big movement of, hey, we're going to move as much as we possibly can, and, and frankly, many of the applications are, are moving back now, a lot of it's because of SLAs, and even control issues in terms of, you know, customer lists, sensitive data, what's my protection in the cloud, things like that, that that have really caused some bigger issues. And so, you know, I do I do think we see the pendulum swing back. I mean, even in what what we would call our our mature business, I I, I hesitated to, to call it legacy, I'll call it mature. Being as though I have great hair myself. Seasoned, we go with seasoned. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. I like that. <laughs> our seasoned mature technology. <laughs> Um, we've seen uh, our, our port counts in terms of our port count shipments on fiber channel host adapters actually move up over the course of last calendar year. So, you know, where, where a lot of folks have said, oh gosh, it's way past its prime, I think some of that is people who had moved, who had anticipated moving all their workloads into cloud-based storage, and now they're, they're realizing that they had a pent-up demand and they're actually increasing their investment in their, their existing SANs. So the other huge trend that we've seen, uh, and it just keeps growing, is flash, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and flash, and all flash arrays, and and you know the, the growth of flash, and we hear over and over that you know flash isn't just for low latency, super high value applications anymore, it's for everything, and then, oh by the way, you get all these second order benefits that you never anticipated when you, when you put in more flash. At the same time, it puts a lot more speed pressure on the rest of the system, right? It's your basic assembly line, you fix one thing, you move to your next point of failure. What are you seeing from your perspective on, on the adoption of Flash and how it's impacting your business directly. Oh, that, that, that's a great point, because I mean, I think that's been one of the big growth drivers, both in, in higher speed ethernet as well as higher speed fiber channel. Um, it, you know, not, not just a year ago, 80% um, of our business was eight gig fiber channel, of our fiber channel business, and now we see about 35% of it uh, shipping at 16 gig, and especially on the, the target or the storage array side, we see those as the first adopters for 32 gig fiber channel, mostly attributed to the all flash array folks. Because you know the, the, they used to be gated by their, their storage being rotating media. And, you know, the, the, the bit rate for a rotating media disk drive, a SAS or a SATA drive, was you know relatively low. Now we've got you know NVMe SSDs that can drive at whatever, however many lanes you want of PCIe, it can drive that forward. We recently did a, a demo where you know, we, we filled a 100 gig ethernet pipe with just five uh, NVMe disks, uh, five NVMe PCIe devices. That was enough to fill a 100 gigabit sustainable uh, pipe. <laughs> and you think, well, shoot, that drives a huge amount of bandwidth because most of the AFAs are moving into the enterprise. The enterprise predominantly uses fiber channel as its SANs. We see a huge adoption of, of higher speed fiber channel in SANs. For the greenfield environments, we see them moving over to, to both 25 gig ethernet as well as some of them even as much as 100 gig ethernet. And the other thing is people want to hold more data longer, right? So it's, it's a, the economics have, have flipped from being a liability with too much of this stuff to wow, it's an asset, and I don't know what I have in there, but I better keep it so I can mine it and see what's in there. Well, and, <laughs> and, and that's the fascinating part is that yesterday's liability, you know, we, we, we all saw the, the issues that uh, you know, we had years ago about, oh my gosh, this data's a liability because we, we might be sued for, <laughs> for data that we didn't know we had. And now all of a sudden it's, hey, we can mine this stuff and sell it. And you know, you look at the likes of the public cloud guys, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and I don't, I don't know about, about you guys, uh, you know, if you can't go on to, to uh, any of the social media. I get advertisements for what I searched last on, on the web and I think, holy smokes, these guys know way too much about me. <laughs> that data mining is becoming a reality with all the analytics, and so it's it's a huge new field. But you know, to your point earlier about the, the whole flash-based issue and looking at the total cost of ownership of it, it's amazing when people actually look at the, at the full cost of, of storage over a course of years, 
power becomes a very important factor. And, and flash takes a fraction of the power, even though it's today considerably more expensive. But if you amortize that over a longer period, people are being able to justify using flash, as you say, for primary storage. Right, love it. Love and intended consequences can work to the pro and the con, right? Yes, very <laughs> much. <laughs> All right, so give you the last word. What are you, what are you uh, looking for the last couple of days here at HP Discover? What do you hope to... Uh, to stumble upon. Oh boy, I tell you, this show is such a powerful show for us. HP is our largest customer. Uh, we, we sell, a, a, you know, a, through HP, a tremendous amount of our equipment. And, and for us, this is a, just a terrific environment to both meet with HP execs as well as customers uh, of HP. So for us, it, it, the Switzerland is, is the right approach and that's, it's lead with, with whatever the customer is interested in. If that's Ethernet or fiber channel or some combination thereof, that's what we do. So it's a fabulous show from that perspective. Excellent. Well, Greg, thanks for stopping by. Greg Sher, Jeff Frick, we're going to get some chocolate. <laughs> You're watching theCUBE. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.